Next up, we have Paul Schultz talking about a very interesting looking piece of hardware. So I'm not going to say any more. I'll let him get on with it. Thanks, Paul. Thank you Paul. very much, John. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm not going to go into uh, a whole lot of detail about things I'm going to be talking about on Wednesday. So Wednesday morning after the keynote is my actual talk. Um, hopefully, there's another talk on at the same time called Everyone Gets a Pony. Don't go there. Anyway, um, thank you very much. Um, so what I'm talking about is this little little device here. Um, as part of a, an art installation in Adelaide, um, we built 16 of these. Um, uh, and it's a, um, a muon detector or a cosmic ray, which, which um, muons are particles that are produced in the atmosphere from cosmic rays. Um, and it, uh, essentially, that, that's sort of the picture you see there, that you've got particles coming from space. They hit our atmosphere. Um, and then spread out, and we've, we've got them, the detector set up to, to detect them, and then they play a sound and, um, and maybe log an event or, uh, and flash a light. Um, there were the conspirators involved. So myself, uh, Robert Hart was the p main person who built these. This was his, sort of his third um, device for measuring muons. Um, he's um, sort of a hobby of his that he's been involved in. Um, and I'll explain the, the innards of it in a sec. And then we also had an artist um, Darren Cousins, who sort of was the producer of the particular installation that we, we did. And as you can see there, we were set up on the banks of the Torrens in Adelaide. Um, and I'll, I've got a video that will, so I, I can show you if you're interested. Um, come and see me, otherwise come to the talk. Um, which shows it at the evening. It's, at, at night, it was actually quite spectacular. It's, it's well worth coming to see. Um, There's sort of another photo on the banks of the Torrens at night. Um, and you can sort of see two of them there lit up, green and red. Um, uh, what we were doing was um, uh, so the, when a when a muon is detected, um, it'll initiate a colour or a and, a and a sound, and the colours sort of indicate, and you'll see in a sec which direction the event sort of came from. And one of the other things we did was. Um, push that event out, to the, out onto the network, and then Darren had a um, program that would, would sniff those, would receive those UDP packets, and then run it through a MIDI device and produce audio as well. So it's it's quite immersive. Um, inside this box, um, we've got a couple of boards. The main board in the middle there was a custom-built board that um, Robert made. Um, DigiKey um, did that. Uh, was where we got it manufactured. Um, it went through eight iterations. Um, that was the eighth one. Um, right at the bottom, those three um, tubes there in, in copper, and you're more than welcome to come up and have a look, uh, approach me at some stage, um, are the actual um, tubes that are used, uh, the Geiger tubes. So as a particle flies through them, um, they, they register and trigger. And, that's what, and we look for two out of those three to register an event. And that's what's happening here. So even so those are, those are events being triggered by muons generated high up in the atmosphere coming down to us. Um, uh, I will, yeah, I can talk about that later. This is um, Robert's usual circuit. <laughs> um, he's done this a few times now. Um, and that's the one that he sort of he uses. So this for, for a double, double detector situation. Um, you've got the tubes on the left. Um, the, the pulse that comes in is caused, the negative pulse is caused when a particle ionizes a gas in the, in the, um, in the Geiger tubes, which is at 400 volts. Um, that's shaped, um, and then there's some additional, um, on the right-hand side, there's coincidence detection. So we only, we're looking for events in two tubes that happen simultaneously. Um, and that's the circuit that does that. That's not what we ended up building. Um, believe it or not, this one's actually a lot, it was designed to be a lot sli simpler and cheaper to make. Um, again, on the left, well, that was so these these circuits here were replaced by some 555 timers. Um, I can't say no, a whole lot about them other than um, it was a simpler setup for him to make, um, and they actually caused us a bit of trouble as well. But I mean, the main issues that we had with the with the the, the project were, was 
um, self-inflicted in one sense, and we try to simplify things, make things cheaper, um, and it caused us a little bit of trouble, but we got there. So this is one of the prototypes. You can see the two tubes on the top. Um, there's circuits inside, um, and that was a sort of picture of the board. On the going from left to right, you've got the the parts that um, measure that negative pulse off the from the tubes. In the middle part is a um, these five five timers that do the um, simultaneous events and turn the three the, the pulses from the three tubes into a red, green, or blue, depending on um, which of the which pairs of the three tubes we actually um, register as. Um, all right, people recognise that one. So that's a Raspberry Pi Zero wireless. Um, when the board was originally designed, Robert. The idea was that we would, the audio would be produced by some mechanical means, so whether chime bars or um, uh, something hitting something else. So the original idea was to drive um, something mechanical with 12 volts. One of the things that, that, we, that we did was um, put this project up on Hacker Day. Um, some people might have seen it there. Um, one, of, one of the reasons for doing that is that they have their competitions each year and you can actually win some money and, and Put it towards the project, um, and one of the one of the reasons we didn't go down the way of the mechanical actuators was um, so that we could enter one of those um, categories. And by putting a Raspberry Pi inside, we went to the, we went the IoT Internet of Things category, which actually caused us some problems, but it meant we could get some money. So it's kind of um, one of the things you'll you notice about. Well, <laughs> We put, the, we put the Raspberry Pi in there so that actually um, we could use that to drive the audio. Um, one, of you think, one of the things you might notice about the Raspberry Pi um, Zero is it doesn't actually have any audio on it, um, which is a small for, uh, short, shortcomings. But um, we ended up um, building a, the audio circuitry separately and in, including it. So this is very similar to the, the audio circuits that are the way they're done on the full Raspberry Pi. Um, it uses the PWM output and there's some, layer, there's some software that you can put in the, when the um, Linux kernel boots that runs the um, PWM outputs in the same way as the full Raspberry Pi 3. Um, put it through a, an amplifier with some um, filter circuits and you can get audio out. Um, so that was one fix. Um, what else can I tell you about the, the board? So maybe just describing some of the other boards in there. So you've got the Raspberry Pi Zero there. You've got the main board in the middle. The board on the left-hand side is the 400 volt power supply for the tubes. And then on the next to the tubes down the bottom there on the right is the amplifier circuit for the, the audio with the speakers right down the bottom. Um, this was, um, we'd, had, we'd had the, the installation on the riverbank. Um, in, in Adelaide, we had the Maker Fair. Um, we set, up, set ourselves up for that. And you can sort of see one of them going off there. That was in a bit reasonably large um, factory area that we, they've got for, for that, the old Mitsubishi car maker in Adelaide. Um, we used that space. And we actually won the best backyard science um, category for that. So, we're doing, not too, doing too badly. Um, what else do you do when you've got 16 of these things? Um, if anyone's interested in, in one and would like to purchase one, we're selling them so that we can actually make a, a next version. Um, Christmas lights. <laughs> so that's my house. Um, come Christmas time, like, not quite, well, the, the LED's inside. So you can take that off. Um, there's the LED stripping on the top there. Um, so I've got some LED Christmas lights in my place. Um, there is another project. So if we, if, with the intent of selling them, there's, we've had one person interested who's a tinkerer and a, up in Queensland. Um, we'd like to make them a little bit more commercial. The, I mean, Robert's done an excellent job with the packaging and the, the waterproofing. They're actually waterproof and they can leave them outside so they could, they'd make a really nice garden ornament. Um, we'd like to get schools interested. Um, um, 
it's a good explanation of, of particle physics um, and the world around us. Um, there's a project in Europe um, called Cosmic Pi, um, and we were looking at porting their, so this is their, their web front end for their particular um, detector, which uses solid state um, particle de de detectors. Um, and so I'm sort of in the process now of porting that over to, the, to our Raspberry Pi. Um, and one of the, for instance, one of the things I've added, um, and this is just a screenshot, is for instance, of the plugins. So this, pa this page is something that I've done um, on top of their software, but I haven't sort of rebadged it yet. So there, there are some of the things um, that we did with this piece of hardware. Any questions? Yes? Um, so if you go, yeah, so you're more than welcome to come up and have a look. If I go to, so where you've got the three, so they're sort of standing on end, so it's a bit hard to see, but they're three Geiger tubes. Um, we're looking for simultaneous events on two of those, and that gives us one, two, or three channels, depending on which pair trigger at the same time, and we've mapped that to read green and blue. So when you go back to, so that picture, if you see a whole bunch, if, if several trigger at once and they're red, you kind of get some sort of idea of the direction that that particular event is coming from. Was the idea behind that? Yes? Um, previous projects that, that have been built used horizontal tubes, um, and it was something different that we wanted to try. Um, and it gives more, um, it gives a sort of an azimuth instead of like elevation. Yes, Robin. Are you going to brag about how, do you, how well you did at the Hackaday prize? Oh, we, well, we came first in the IOT, but we lost out the overall year prize to a submersible because <laughs> we don't do too well and in you water. Got to the second to last round. Yeah, something like that. But I mean, Robert's like, he, he, that's what he does, and he does yeah. it really well. Um, so if you, but yes, and alluding to that, if you're interested at all about what it is, it's just Cosmic um, Array on the Hackaday website. You can get all the details and there's photos and logs and everything. Saying everything's up on the um, um, everything's up there and all the code. So the um, the purpose of the, the the Raspberry Pi was for two things. One was to play the sounds and then also to transmit events over the network. Um, and that was what I did. Um, and rather than go, go to um, maybe libraries, I ended up looking up um, GNU info pages on TCP examples. And they just trigger on an event using Pi, using wiry, wiring Pi protocol, and then just send it out to the network or play the audio. So this, it's not particularly um, uh, tricky, but it works. Yes? Um, there's some interesting physics with that because you know that with different levels of the ionosphere, maybe day versus night, you might get different effects. I, I haven't seen that yet. Um, I'll or a different number of genes, yeah. I Yeah, for f f I've, so just after New Year's, I, I'd got about 10 days of recording of the, of the events, and I've, was, um, I fired up, I, if people don't know, I. Python is an interactive Python, there's some graphing stuff. And again, I'll, sh I'll show a graph at the other talk, but it, lo it just looks random. I haven't seen any trends yet, but I'll... Solar yeah, well, that's, that's, that's solar, that's, but th these aren't from the sun. These are, I mean, the, the things that do affect the rate are latitude because of the Earth's magnetic field. Um, Apparently east to west because, like, maybe that's the day because of the Earth's rotation. Um, yeah. Well, the people might have heard of the the what they did with the Great Pyramid in December. Looking, at, they were using muons from cosmic rays to detect the cavity. cavities inside the inside the pyramid, and I. I believe they weren't, they weren't so much using the um, Geiger tubes, but solid state detectors, which is what we want to do with the next version. I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Can you use a source of randomness? So, so what is it? I can use it as a source of randomness. 
Yeah, well, I was, that was, so the, the, I've got this now. What do you do with it? Um, I've actually got the script that will generate Bitcoin um, uh, um, key, not key, well, wallet keys, private keys, because um, you can do that with 99D6 rolls, right? So you can feed that. All I do is generate that, and you can feed that into um, one of the paper wallet generators to get uh, a private and public keys. So, um, yeah. Thank you very much, Paul.